Hi, I've been with Imagine Optics now for just over a year, but the company was founded over 17 years ago. Prior to 2020, Imagine Optics was based in the North Carolina State University, where a lot of the innovative work was carried out and many of the challenges associated with the new technology was overcome. Things have changed dramatically since then. The team has grown by a factor of five, and this is a photograph of our new headquarters in the Durham Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. We have over 25,000 square feet of space, half of which is dedicated to laboratory and manufacturing. During the last 17 years, over 50 patents have been filed for many of the components and solutions that I'm going to present. The team has a deep understanding of liquid crystal polymer films, but we also understand the challenges of AR and VR technology, some of which I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through here today. We create thin film optics. Our superachromatic retarder has extremely flat spectral performance, but this performance extends over a very broad angle. One of the key features of the technology is that we control the optical axis at the substrate interface. This enables us to control the retardance of our retarders across the surface, but also this same capability enables us to generate a broad set of components, including geometric phase lenses and polarization gratings that extend to the sub wavelength grating periods and pushes us into the Bragg regime. Bragg polarization gratings are applicable to waveguide displays. This first plot compares our quarter wave plate with the competition, where the blue line is our product. As I've said, the performance is really flat across the visible spectrum. The second plot shows that this performance is held up very well over angle, where the performance of the competition was measured to drop off after about 10 degrees. With our coating processes, we can control the retardance across angle and spectrum, and any fractional retardance can be achieved. We can even produce color filters, including the ability to be transparent in one band while maintaining the desired retardance in another. This bottom image shows the variable optical axis of a retarder, which we generate during our direct right manufacturing process. Geometric phase lenses are flat and very thin. The coatings are generally less than 5 microns. They are interesting in that one polarization state, let's say right-handed circular, they produce a convergent focus. And in the orthogonal polarization state, in this case left-handed circular, they produce a divergent focus. The diffraction efficiency can be nearly 100% with high photopic contrast of greater than 201, depending on the angle of incidence range. Geometric phase lenses can be generated with essentially any prescription from rotationally symmetric lenses, described for instance as a binary two surface in ZMAX, to completely freeform surfaces, described for instance as a binary one surface in ZMAX. These lenses have already found application in transmissive lenses for VR and can also be applied to color correction for display engines. With an LC switch, we can also switch the function of the lens, which is applicable to variable focus lenses for display focus accommodation, and also for variable focus and zoom lenses for sensor applications. In the form of a micro lens array, geometric phase lenses can be used to control the chief ray and numerical aperture of display devices, or for use in light field displays or polarization conversion systems. This is an interesting application of geometric phase lenses for VR. This is the Facebook Half Dome program, where they have been able to show almost continuous focus variation by employing a stack of LC switches and geometric phase lens pairs. As with the color filters, we have great control of the diffraction efficiency over angle and wavelength. This is the design of a color selective geometric phase lens. The left plot shows a geometric phase lens tuned to diffract red while passing green and blue. The middle plot is tuned to diffract green and the right plot tuned to diffract blue. Waveguide displays are incorporated into a large proportion of AR systems and for good reason. The AR industry is driving towards spectacle-like fall factor which is really difficult to achieve with conventional optics. 
This is a sample of some of the available AR systems. All of these except the Unreal system are waveguide systems. All the systems on the left are examples of surface relief grating based waveguides and all utilize the same nano imprint lithography fabrication processes. The three on the right are not surface relief grating based. The first system by Unreal is a birdbath eyepiece. This type of projection system has a trade off between field of view, exit pupil, and eye relief. If those parameters grow, the volume of the eyepiece grows significantly. In waveguide systems, volume increases with field of view, but the impact to volume is relatively small. Loomis is a reflective waveguide, and recent examples of this show improved optical performance, but scalability may not be easy since it employs traditional glass cutting, grinding and polishing technology. The last example by Digilens employs switchable brand gratings, which is a super interesting technology, but does have limitations in angular bandwidth for each of the gratings. Given that most solutions for AR for spectacle form factor push us towards waveguide solutions, these are the drivers for the next generation AR displays. Waveguides are currently inefficient, have poor uniformity and have inherent visual artifacts. The display engines are still too large and heavy, we need display engines to be smaller than a sugar cube. Current display engines are certainly not. To enable the AR system to be aware of its surroundings, a lot of sensors are used. On HoloLens, for example, there are eight cameras, including eye tracking sensors and a depth sensor. Each sensor has optics, electronics, and mechanical packaging. Imagine Optics developed a world first in the fashion gratings with a grating that generates high diffraction efficiency over a very wide angular input. The crux of this breakthrough made by Imagine Optics is the discovery that a slanted grating can be generated by adding a dopant to the LCP mix. If subsequent layers have a different concentration of dopant or a different dopant, different slant angles can be generated. What we know about the slant angle of a grating is that peak diffraction efficiency occurs at a particular angle related to this slant angle. With multiple slant angles, the grating angular bandwidth broadens. Since the LC molecules align perfectly to the previous layer, the grating period and orientation are conserved. Trying to achieve this with a stack of brand gratings or multiplexing the recording is extremely difficult to achieve without see-through or display artifacts due to slight differences in period or orientation. One important thing to mention is that with our manufacturing techniques, we can vary the efficiency across the surface of the exit pupil expansion gratings to achieve global exit pupil uniformity from the waveguide. This figure shows in blue a Bragg PG grating that I did, did last year compared with other technologies. With other technologies like photopolymer Bragg grating, it is possible to achieve nearly 100% diffraction efficiency, but what you find is that the angular bandwidth collapses. You can also achieve fairly flat angular performance, but at the expense of peak diffraction efficiency. Since there are generally three or more gratings in a waveguide solution, three low efficiency, non-uniform gratings multiply together to reduce the waveguide efficiency to as low as 4% and non-uniformity to as large as 5 to 1, where the maximum luminance in the center of the display is five times that at the edge of the field of view. With Im Imagine Optics Bragg polarization gratings, waveguide efficiency can be increased by about a factor of five times that of current waveguide products, and from the graph, you can see that we can also improve the angular uniformity. In diffractive waveguides, see-through rainbows can be observed. Forward light within the display field of view generally diffracts into the waveguide and diffracts out again. In this case, the diffractive dispersion is corrected. For extreme off-axis angles, light is diffracted straight into the user's eyes. In the example here, overhead lighting generates a rainbow of colours. Using Imagine Optics Bragg polarization gratings, we've shown that the see-through rainbows can be reduced to less than 1% of the incident light. 
Almost every fielded AR system projects light in the forward direction. This includes diffractive and reflective waveguides, free space combiners and beam splitter eyepieces. This presents privacy issues since other people can see what you are seeing. This does not bring people together because other people cannot see your eyes. And aesthetically, this is pretty funky looking. In the case of diffractive waveguides, this is caused by low diffraction efficiency in the output grating, leading to efficiencies in the other transmitted and reflected orders. Luminance of the display light in the forward outside world direction can be almost as high as the display light to the user. Using Bragg polarization gratings, diffraction out of the waveguide is almost entirely in the first order. This means that forward light leakage is below 1% of the display luminance. So I've talked a lot about waveguide displays, but there are other areas in AR and VR systems where we can help reduce mass, volume, and cost. For display optics, in my experience, folded optical architectures such as a pancake window or Burbath optic represents the smallest form factor compared with straight through lenses. Yes, I realized that I said earlier that the Unreal Birdbath would grow with field of view, but in the context of a display engine, this is still one of the smallest form factors to achieve collimated light. For wide field of view to maintain high efficiency, uniformity and low ghost images, you really need high, high performance polarization optics, such as our reflective polarizers and quarter wave plates. A diffractive geometric phase lens can also be used to color correct a single refractive lens in a much thinner form factor than a traditional doublet. And sensor systems. As I've said before, AR and VR systems tend to have a lot of sensors. We can reduce the number of sensors using our technology. For example, by combining an IR and visible sensor, this can be achieved by switching out the IR using a wavelength selective reflective polarizer and an LC switch. An example of this application would be where a color photo video camera could also function as a structured light depth sensor. Infrared to a photo video sensor is normally filtered, otherwise the colors would be rendered incorrectly. A second application is depicted in this diagram, where we can scan a sensor field of view using a pair of polarization gratings and LC switches. This would enable the field of view of a single sensor to be increased without losing angular resolution. This application can be used in video-based head tracking and also in depth sensors. One area of interest for this combination is in laser radar for autonomous vehicles. I've talked about improving AR and VR systems using liquid crystal polymer optics, but it's no good presenting that without the ability to design and manufacture the components. In our design area, We've developed modeling and simulation software that has shown excellent correlation between design and build performance. This includes MATLAB and ZMAX modules for modeling all surface types that we produce. Our manufacturing process is the same for all coatings. We start with a very thin layer of, of photo alignment material. We then pattern this using a UV light source. By utilizing different masks in our patterning process, we can generate different types of components. We then coat with multiple layers of liquid crystal polymer. As I've mentioned, one of the critical features of these coatings is that the axis of the LC molecules self-aligns to the previous layer. In our new facility, we've installed and integrated state-of-the-art manufacturing equipment that is based on a solid foundation of manufacturing experience over the prior 16 years. These machines were designed by Imagine Optics and integrated in the two years before moving into the new premises. The picture on the left shows our rapid prototyping fully automated robot machine capable of coating 325 millimeter square glass or plastic sheets. This has reduced what took several weeks to do at the university down to days. This is capable of producing small batch runs from one to several tens of thousands of parts. We also generate the masks for our production roll-to-roll -roll line. We also have two roll-to-roll -roll production lines. Since the roll-to-roll -roll employs the same masks as a rapid prototyping robot, 
there is a seamless transition from rapid prototyping to mass production. The roll is 600 millimeters wide, and we can coat over 1,000 meters in an eight hour shift. Since it is roll to roll, our technology is very scalable to mass production and cost effective. So in conclusion, Imagine Optics LTP Optics supports a broad area of functionality in AR and VR subsystems, including displays and sensor optics. We address key shortfalls with respect to diffractive waveguide technology, including improving angular uniformity and efficiency, reducing see-through rainbows and forward light leakage. Our manufacturing process is scalable to low-cost, high-volume production, which is where we would all like to be with AR and VR. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really looking forward to the day when we can do this in person. If you want to find out more, either reach out to me or go on our website where we have a lot of interesting papers about the technology. And thanks again.